In this video, we will discuss how to deal with outliers, data points that seem to be significantly different than the rest of the data points in a distribution of data. So what are outliers and why are they important to us as far as helping us analyze our data? Well, these are data points that appear to be significantly different than the majority of the data points. We're usually being able to identify those either in a scatter plot or in a histogram or through functions in SPSS that will give us an idea if we have scores that are higher or lower than the majority of the scores. Now we can identify those either visually as I mentioned, but the most effective way is the outlier labeling rule or labeling technique in which we're using the quartiles, the third and first quartile of the data set we have, taking that difference between the two quartiles and multiplying it by 2.2 and then either adding that value to the third quartile or subtracting it from the first quartile value in order to determine boundaries for outliers. Once you've identified those outliers, if we do have any, we need to try and figure out what we're going to do about them. And why that's important is because these outliers can significantly skew data from a normal distribution. We can have just a single score that may pull the mean in one direction or another that will then misrepresent the data. If we have data that no longer represent a normal population or a normal distribution, then that limits our choices as far as ways we could manipulate or analyze that data, and a normal distribution being one of the primary assumptions we have when we do parametric statistics. And because of this, that this assumption of normal distribution for parametric statistics, if we try and do parametric analysis techniques using skewed data or data that is not normal, that would significantly affect the accuracy of that technique, and we would be testing our hypothesis using a p-value that probably will not reflect any true differences that might be there. This can also affect how well a sample then represents the population. If our sample has some outliers, but these outliers are not typically present in the population, then this, our sample no longer represents the population, and any inferences that we make during hypothesis testing uh, will be false and that will then limit the external validity or the generalization of any results that we might have. So we talked about what outliers are, why they're important, um, and why we need to try and identify them. Now let's talk about some of the different techniques we have for dealing with them. Now there are two techniques that are considered to be the most common and they're techniques that are used in two different kinds of situations. And the first technique is called trimming. And this is where we're basically eliminating data points from the analysis based upon several possibilities. In other words, things that made them outliers or reasons they might be outliers, which would then allow us to feel comfortable with or compel us to then trim them from our distribution of scores. And this is usually done when we have data that is out of range. In other words, where if we're measuring a certain value and the highest possible value is a 10, and we have a score that's an 11 or a 12, then we know that that's not possible based upon the measurement technique we we're using. So that data is invalid, it's out of range, or we have a situation in which there is a data entry error. In other words, we're measuring body fat percentage and we have an entry that reads 360%, then we know that's some sort of an entry error. The next is if we feel the data is biased in some way and biased through measurement error, Perhaps there was a measurement error uh, in individual data points that were collected, or maybe, or maybe in a series of data points that were collected, there was some sort of measurement error. Maybe the measurement tool wasn't used correctly, or maybe the, the equipment we were using to measure a certain variable was not calibrated. Um, if we suspect that there was any measurement error or the data was biased in some way, then that's another reason we could trim the data. And then lastly, if we feel the sample is biased, in other words, there might be subjects in the sample that either aren't, or shouldn't be there because of some sort of sampling bias or that they are there and they no longer represent the sample we expect to. So let's say we've collected data uh, and we assume our sample is under the age of 65 and we might have some subjects that are over the age of 65 through some sort of error, then our sample is now biased.
So very often when we have these situations, like data that's out of range or missing, um, or there's entry errors of some kind, and we don't have the raw data available, we can't go back, back and fix those. If we have a situation in which data is biased or there's a measurement error, again, we typically cannot go back and re-evaluate or re-measure those subjects. And then lastly, when the sample is biased, we typically we don't want to include those subjects in our sample because that would make the sample non-representative. And so when we have those kinds of situations, uh, we basically eliminate those data points from the analysis. We throw those data points out. In other words, we trim them from the data set in order to eliminate those possible outliers. Now the other technique is known as winsorizing, and this is done in a situation in which there has not been a mistake made, um, but it's a situation where it's a valid or legitimate score, but it truly is an outlier. It's, it's higher or lower than the majority of the other scores. And so when we have small amounts of scores that we consider to be legitimate outliers, um, we can transform those scores by assigning them to the next highest or lowest value found in the sample that we consider to not be an outlier. So if we had data on salaries and the majority of salary data was less than $100,000 but we had one data point that was $200,000 and that's a legitimate score but it's a true outlier what we would then do is transform that score to 100,000, which is the next uh, closest value that is found in the sample that is not considered an outlier. Now, it's recommended we do this for very small amounts of scores, typically only uh, two or three, if we have that situation where we have two or three outliers and their legitimate scores, we can Windsorize them and, and feel that we haven't really affected our ability to analyze the data. But when we have larger numbers of scores, then we typically um, cannot Windsorize. So let's go run through some very quick simple examples. So let's run through an example of trimming. So as we can see here we have some data points um, and we, the majority of data points are clustered uh, pretty close together and then we have two data points that are appear to be significantly higher than the others at both ends of distribution. And so in this case we determine that these have been outliers through whatever method we're using. And what we would then do is just eliminate them. We would trim them. And so now our distribution would have those two scores eliminated. Now it would be a smaller distribution, a smaller sample, but we've now eliminated those outliers and our distribution is more likely to be normal as opposed to being skewed. Now an example of winds rising, here's that same data set that we had before. And let's say we know that the 2 and the 22 are, are not mistakes. Um, they're, they're true values, but they're, they're true outliers. So how do we deal with those? Well, we transform the 22 into a 14, which is the next closest score that's not an outlier, and we take our 2 and transform it into a 10, which is the next closest non-outlier score. And so our sample would have the same number of subjects in it now, but those outliers will be eliminated. And again, we're typically only going to do this when we have small numbers of outliers, and we know that the values that we've collected as outliers are legitimate, unbiased sample data. <clears throat> okay, so a few final thoughts as far as dealing with outliers and some of the different techniques that we've talked about. When we have less than 5% of our data points that we feel are outliers, again, using whatever st uh, standard or criteria we want to, if we've got less than 5%, trimming or Windsorizing the data will very likely not affect any hypothesis testing outcome that we do and it won't significantly affect the p-value at which we are testing. If we have greater than 5% of our data set that may need to be trimmed or Windsorized, um, we need to be very careful about doing that um, and in many cases we want to try and avoid that situation. When we are trimming or Windsorizing greater than 5%, that could, that could definitely affect any hypothesis testing outcomes and could certainly affect the p-value at which we're testing our hypothesis. So when we do trim or Windsorize greater than 5%, what that does typically is significantly reduces our sample size, which may then reduce the power of our analysis. It may also make the sample size less representative by reducing it in size,
um, and now the sample might no longer represent the population as much as we intend, and that again affects the generalizability of our results. If we had close to a normal distribution of data and we start trimming more than 5% of it, that might actually create uh, a skew, uh, depending on where the trimming is taking place. It might not always occur at both ends of the distribution. It might occur at one end of the distribution, or it might be kind of scattered throughout the distribution, especially if we're talking about trimming, where we're trimming uh, data entry errors or um, data that appears to be uh, unlikely to be unbiased data, we, we could be affecting the normalcy of our distribution. It could now become a skewed distribution. So when we have those situations in which we've got greater than 5% that we feel like we need to trim or Windsorize, we, we probably want to avoid that uh, for the three reasons that I stated. And we might want to consider transforming the data in some way, um, converting it to a different kind of alternate outcome variable. Um, instead of reporting pounds of weight loss, we might report um, percentage of weight loss. Uh, we might consider transforming the data using a method called bootstrapping, uh, or we might have to use an alternative data analysis technique. Instead of using parametric data analysis, we might have to use non-parametric data analysis technique. So these are some things to consider as you uh, look for outliers, as you think about how you're going to deal with your outliers. If we've got less than 5%, then trimming or Windsorizing is a perfectly acceptable way to do it. If we've got greater than 5%, we might need to really think quite hard about the pros and cons of trimming or Windsorizing. Uh, in the description of this video, I've included some references uh, if you'd like some further information about these techniques. And hopefully, as you do your data analysis, uh, you won't have to do either of these techniques. But if you do have outliers, at least now you have some options on how you might deal with this situation.